Fact number one, Michael Jordan's career almost ended before it started. The year is 1984 and there's this new kid in Chicago that has the city a buzz. They knew him as the rookie they were hoping would be the future of the franchise, but we know him today as the goat in the face of professional basketball. But on the evening of October 26, over 35 years ago, his legacy almost ended before it started. The Bulls were playing their first regular season game of the year. Early in the game, Jordan went up for his first official NBA dunk attempt, and the play ended extremely ugly. As you can see by the way the play unfolds, the defender's leg is caught underneath him, resulting in an awkward and painful landing. Fortunately, after a few moments, Jordan was okay and continued to play in the game. But if the angle had just been slightly different on the landing, it could have resulted in a broken shooting arm or even damage to his neck. Obviously, despite the terrible experience on his first dunk attempt, Jordan managed a few successful dunks in his career after that night. Fact number two, Larry Bird has the most dedicated fan, albeit a criminal. It was the night of December 12, 2002 in Oklahoma City. A man by the name of Eric Torpy and his two buddies drive past a Little Caesars pizza restaurant when they notice a Little Caesars employee counting money behind the register. It's at this moment that Eric and his buddies decide that it would be a good idea to rob the employee in the store. They were under the influence of drugs, and long story short, Eric's buddy shoots a couple employees and Eric ditches the scene. But unfortunately for Eric, he dropped his hat. Police find the hat, and a few months later, Eric's DNA is traced back to him, and he ends up in prison, sentenced to 30 years. At this point, you're probably wondering, what the heck does this have to do with NBA basketball? Well, you see, Eric was a loyal Celtics fan and a Larry Bird fan, and Bird, during his playing days, wore the jersey number 33. So Eric did what any logical Celtics fan would do, and request the judge to extend his sentence to 33 years to honor his favorite player. The judge was feeling accommodating that day and granted Eric the extra three years. Eric has now been in prison for 15 years and now says that he regrets his decision. Congratulations, you played yourself. Unfortunately, when Larry was asked about Eric's commitment to his honor, Bird declined to comment. Fact number three, Kobe Bryant was booed at Staples Center and then cheered. Lakers fans were in a different headspace in the mid 2000s. After the departure of Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe had a terrible supporting cast, and in the next several seasons, Kobe was either missing the playoffs or getting bounced in the first round, despite the fact that he was leading the league in scoring. Many of us Laker fans were beginning to question if Kobe could win a championship for us without Shaq, and Kobe was starting to doubt as well. After being eliminated from the playoffs for the second straight year to the Phoenix Suns, the Mamba took his frustration to the media and publicly demanded a trade in the summer of 2007. This started a whirlwind of rumors and a stressful offseason for Laker fans. At any moment, we were expecting news to break that Kobe had been traded to the Bulls like he wanted. Despite Kobe's demands, management refused to trade him. This brings us to October 30th, 2007. It's the season opener and a matchup between the Lakers and Rockets. This would go on to be one of the most incredible, weird, and forgotten games of NBA history. The thing about us Laker fans is that we can be a little bit emotionally reactive to things. If you don't want us, then we don't want you, and the fans let Kobe know that as he was booed during his introduction. It was a surreal night as Kobe was booed in Staples Center the first several times he touched the ball. Regardless of the upset Laker fans, Kobe's frustration was valid, and no play greater resembled his lackluster supporting cast than this play halfway through the game. Numbers, the team is going to be struggling. Oh, the ball's oh my gosh. In. That is unbelievable. I don't know if I've ever seen that. I, don't, I was just going to say, I, I don't think I ever have. But, but to follow up with that, I mean, for Kobe and this team to be successful. Fun fact, this is Tracy McGrady, who doesn't even touch the ball on this possession and is 20 feet from the basket. But because he was the nearest Rocket player to the Lakers who knocked it in, McGrady gets the points. Most of the way through, this had been a pretty ugly performance by the Lakers supporting cast, but Kobe was doing everything in his power to keep his team in it as he was scoring in bunches and actually shot 27 free throws this game. Late in the third quarter, while Kobe was leading the charge, this happens while he's at the free throw line. Half minute to play here in the third quarter. The Lakers crowd is chanting Kobe's name. This is the same Laker crowd that was booing him relentlessly to start the game, and now, just 35 minutes of basketball later, they are chanting his name. This game had one of the craziest ending sequences ever seen. The Lakers were down by 12 points with only a minute and 36 seconds left in the game. 
the game is over, right? Not quite, as the Lakers had one great comeback left in them. Kobe drives to the basket and gets an and one on Yao Ming. Nine point game. Luke Walton steals the ball and then Kobe hits a three on the other end. Six point game. Derek Fisher steals the ball and Jordan Farmer gets a driving layup. Four point game. Farmar fouls Mike James and James misses both free throws and Kobe gets the rebound. Kobe gets a driving layup on the other end and it's a two point game. Luke Walton gets another steal and Kobe finds Fisher for the long two. It's a tie game. Kobe and the Lakers were trying to pull a Tracy McGrady on Tracy McGrady, but that's when the Rockets drive down the floor, pass to Shane Battier, and he hits a dagger three. Ball game. Somehow, this game and its epic finish have been lost in basketball history. Let me know in the comments section what are some other details about NBA legends that have been lost in history. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.